Hiya. Uh, so we are on to key area five of unit two, and key area five is the structure and function of arteries, capillaries, and veins. Now this little video here is going to look at the structure of the um, arteries, capillaries, and veins, and then the second video focuses on what happens at capillaries with tissue fluid, lymph, and that kind of thing. Okay, so this this first video super easy, super quick. Let's get through it. So in terms of stuff you learn at National 5, you learn that arteries carry high pressure blood away from the heart. So remember, arteries are away. It's that alliterative one. Uh, arteries have thick muscular wall to cope with that high pressure blood that's going to be pumped around the body. Veins carry the low pressure blood back to the heart, so basically from your toes all the way back against gravity. So it's low pressure. Uh, veins have valves to stop blood flow. So again, alliterative. And the capillaries have one cell thick wall. So they are the really, really thin ones. Uh, they're the really small ones, and they're the site of the exchange of materials from blood. Uh, just a little, the veins don't stop the blood flow, they stop the back flow of blood. Just to check on that oh. one. Is, it, is that what I said? Yeah. I did not even notice. <laughs> so they stop the back flow of blood, but they stop blood going in the wrong direction. Okay, so the cardiovascular system is a connected network of blood vessels, blood, and a muscular pump. Remember this idea of systems are organs that work together so the idea is we're looking for a system of organs and tissues working together to do a particular job and its job is to provide tissues with oxygen and nutrients and it helps remove waste and toxins from the body by carrying those things through the waste disposal organs so the lung is a waste disposal organ to get rid of co2 liver is a waste disposal organ it breaks down toxins kidneys are waste disposal organs they get rid of those broken down bits into your pee so you can pee it out and get it bless you sorry Okay. Yep. Out of your body. In terms of the functions of the cardiovascular system, there are five main ones you know. I don't think we've ever really seen them being asked about, but it is there. You do need to know them. Uh, so just very quickly, transporting oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. You should know that one from that five anyway. Transporting nutrients and removing waste. Again, it was in that five. Fighting diseases, transporting hormones. So remember the idea that hormones are chemical messengers that travel in the blood. Therefore, the blood is responsible for transporting hormones. And then regulating body temperature, which we'll touch on a little bit in this video. Yep. Okay, so the blood vessels carry the blood through the cardiovascular system, and there are three types you need to know: arteries, veins, and capillaries. We will build a little bit on your National Five knowledge, but there's really there's not not a huge not amount that we add to it. Uh, so there'll be certain things that we assume, like the National Five knowledge that we covered in the first slide. Um, so each has a specific function, and they also have structural features that help them deal with their function. So they are shaped in order to cope with the job that they have to do. So first one we're going to touch on is arteries. You can see a nice picture of one here. Now again, you've seen pictures of these if you've done National 5. Um, you do need to know what a picture looks like in comparison to one another. So you need to know that this is what an artery looks like in comparison to a vein, which we'll see in the next slide, and a capillary uh, after that. So there's certain features of them. We've already said that arteries carry high pressure blood away from the heart. Again, that was stuff you learned in National 5. They have a thick muscular wall with lots of elastic fibres, and that basically helps them stretch when the heart beats. Obviously, you've got high pressure blood, you want your blood vessels to be able to withstand the high pressure. So having really thick muscular walls and lots of elastic fibres really, really help this fact. They also have this thing called the endothelium layer, which if you look in the picture, it's like the little kind of bobbly yellow layer in the middle. And this is the layer that helps to protect the smooth muscle from any fast moving blood. So when the blood is being pumped really fast, like your heart tends to do to keep you alive, that protects the muscle from being damaged in any kind of way. It's also something that's useful to know for when we come on to the diseases of the heart. Yeah. What the endothelium lining yeah. is, because stuff gets under it. I like to think of it like the non-stick layer that you get on those fancy pans. As soon as you damage it, stuff starts to stick to it. It's a similar rule with arteries. As soon as you damage the endothelium, stuff starts to stick to the wall. Uh, so controlling blood supply, because there is that smooth muscle that is around the arteries, that smooth muscle can contract and relax, just like, you know, like your biceps, your skeletal muscle can do. OK, so they can contract, or relax. And when they contract, they make the lumen really, really small. So you get less blood flow through. Or if they relax, they can make the lumen really quite big and that lets more blood through. So there's a term for that, that contraction and relaxation. And vasoconstriction means the artery constricts, it contracts, and blood flow is reduced. Vasodilation, if like your pupil is dilating, it gets really big. So vasodilation, the artery relaxes, the blood flow is increased. Now, this is what's linked to temperature control. Like we said, that was one of the main functions of the cardiovascular system. And when you're really, really cold, your arteries will vasoconstrict, so they will become smaller and contract more. And the idea is, 
They are reducing the blood flow to your extremities, so things like your fingers and your toes, and trying to divert all of your blood flow to your main organs because they want you to stay alive. That's when like people get frostbite in their fingers and toes. The blood is not there. They've got so cold, they lose them. You don't get it in your internal organs because that's where your blood's going because they figure you can survive without a toe. You cannot survive if your pancreas has mm. died because of the cold. So that's kind of the main idea of vasal constrictions. It, they contract, they become smaller. Blood flow to the extremities is reduced and blood flow to your internal core is increased to you keep may have, you alive. Yeah, you may have noticed this happening when you're in class at the moment. I don't know about your classrooms, but my classroom is absolutely Baltic right now. And my hands stop working very frequently because they're not getting enough blood. Now, my body has decided if we send blood to your hands, your core temperature is going to drop. Not good. So we're not going to do that. So I don't get working hands. Fun. And the opposite, which we never really experience in Scotland, is when you are too hot, your arteries will vasodilate in your hands, so the blood flow will be increased to the surface of your skin and to the tips of your fingers and toes and away from your main organs. doesn't mean it goes completely away from your main organs, because if that happened, you would die, but there is less of it diverted there, and it goes to the surface, and that's again the idea. If your blood vessels are really close to the surface of your skin, the heat can evaporate out of you much more easily. Okay, uh, another thing, an example of how vasodilation and vasoconstriction helps you is for oxygen supply. If you are intensely exercising, the muscles in your arms and legs, the arteries, sorry, the arteries in your muscles and arms and legs will vasodilate to supply those muscles with oxygen and nutrients for aerobic respiration or um, for uh, fermentation uh, pathway for lactate metabolism. OK, uh, during rest, though, what happens is arteries in muscles and arms and legs will vasoconstrict and arteries in the digestive system will vasodilate basically to supply your digestive system with the oxygen and nutrients that it needs in order to perform its digestive function. And this is why it's really not a good idea to do intense exercise immediately after eating, because what happens is the blood flow will get prioritized to your arms and legs because your body thinks you are about to be killed by a predator and so prioritizes the running away over the digesting of your food. So it will vasodilate to your arms and your legs. You'll get less blood supply to your digestive system and you'll end up with undigested food in your organs and your body only knows one way to deal with undigested food and that's get rid of it. So vomiting tends to happen. Yeah, this is just a quick diagram in terms of pulse points. Uh, we've seen it come up like once in the question. In the prelim before. question. Uh -huh. They've asked where can you take your pulse points, so it's useful to me to just be able to name one or two of them. I wouldn't say learn them all, that's totally unnecessary, but take one or two of these arteries and be like, okay, this is an artery you can take your pulse point from. The radial artery is the easiest one, that's the one where we you know, feel your wrist uh, for a pulse point, that's the easiest one to artery, know. Which is mm -hmm. your neck. Okay, so veins carry low pressure blood to the heart. National five fact there. They've got a larger lumen than the arteries. An important language note, don't call it the hole through the vein or opening. You have to call it lumen. Okay, so they've got a larger lumen than the arteries, but less muscle and elastic fibers. Now, due to the fact that they are low pressure, it means that they are not carrying more blood than the arteries. Okay, so even though they've got a larger lumen, there is not more blood in them because it's low pressure stuff. Okay, the endothelium, again, is a protective layer that's protecting the inside of the vein. So it's doing exactly the same function as in the arteries. So again, exam question might be, they have a picture of an artery and vein sitting next to each other. They don't tell you which is which, and they ask you to identify what is blood vessel A or B. So you're looking for, for vein, a thinner muscle wall. You're looking for a larger lumen, um, and that's basically the difference between them. Potentially valves. Mm -hmm. uh, the elastic fibers, that is one worth knowing. Basically, veins are less stretchy than arteries are. Um, the pulse points that we can detect in arteries, that demonstration of their stretchiness, the idea is they can pulse outwards and back in like an elastic function, whereas veins, they are much less elastic. They don't stretch as much as arteries can. Okay, so uh, obviously, like we've said, there is low it's low pressure blood that we find in veins because it is a long way past your heart. It has been pumped around half of your body, and um, so it has lost some of the pressure that has probably come out of your heart. With so venous blood needs to be able to travel all the way from the tips of your toes basically back to your heart, and obviously this is against gravity, which is a little bit hard, especially when it's that low pressure. So the idea is it has these things called valves, and they prevent the backflow of blood. So basically, once the blood has gone up a little bit. The valves will shut behind it and it just means it can't go any further down than that. It's like almost having a trap door below it that just stops it um, and won't let it go back down the way and that keeps happening and that's how the blood gets all the way from the tips of your toes all the way back up to your heart. So veins prevent, the uh, valves prevent the backflow of blood. 
Okay, capillaries. Uh, now, something that people get confused about is the position of capillaries. So the idea is blood would come from the arteriole, which is just a fancy name for tiny artery. You don't need to know that term for, uh, for higher human or anything like that. They come from the arteriole at high pressure into the capillaries, into the capillary bed, where they will slowly lose their pressure. And then the idea is that they'll then get bigger and bigger and bigger and join back towards the venule. Now, capillaries, National 5 definition here, they are the site of exchange of materials between the cells and the blood. They form dense networks around tissues to ex increase the surface area for exchange. And the walls of the capillary are one cell thick, or you can say they have thin walls. Do not say capillaries are one cell thick. That is wrong. OK, the walls are one cell thick and this allows for efficient diffusion. It is easier for oxygen to move through a single cell layer of wall than it is for 40 cells to move through. OK, all of that is National 5 stuff, so you should already know it, but they want you to know it at a higher level. OK, so to summarise, here's a nice summary table of the blood vessel. So we're up. We'll take it down for each vessel. So yeah, if so you go on down for arteries. So in terms of arteries, their size of lumen is they are quite narrow, the lumen. Uh, the wall of the vessel is very thick, smooth muscle. Uh, they are very, very elastic. The blood pressure will be high and they flow or blood flows away from the heart. OK, capillaries are one cell wide, like they are very, very narrow. That's just to show the fact that they can only fit one blood cell at a time flowing through it. They are The walls are one cell thick, so very thin walls. They are not elastic at all. The blood pressure, it goes from high to low. Like we're gonna cover this in the next topic, but overall, I think we idea is we say that the pressure in capillaries is low or lower. Um, and the direction of flow is between an artery and a vein. Okay, and finally veins, they have quite a wide lumen. They are much thinner, smooth muscle. The wall of it is made of much smoother, much thinner, smooth muscle. Uh, they are slightly elastic, but nowhere near as elastic as an artery. Uh, they carry very low pressure blood and they carry it back to the heart. And also they have valves. OK, so that is the structure of vessels. This is a very useful table to know for comparison of the three blood vessels and their structure. The next thing we're going to focus on is capillaries and the how basically does material do materials get from inside the capillary to the cells and that's what the main focus of that is and we'll see you then.